today I'm going to talk you through the basics of how to fish a method feeder. So my setup today couldn't be any simpler. You need a feeder rod, a reel, some method feeders and preferably a mould. Some hook lengths, these are pre-tied. I have two options in terms of bait, some ground bait and some micro pellets. And then a small variety of some white and standard pellets and some little wafters. And that's all you need to fish the method feeder effectively. So I'm going to show you how to set up a method feeder. You have two options, an elasticated or an inline. First of all, I'll show you how to set up an elasticated. So this is my main line. I have a twisted loop. It's about five inches long. And within that loop, I have a large snap link swivel. You can get your feeder. And you can see at the top of the elasticated tube, there's a hole. And this allows you to clip the feeder to the snap link swivel. Lock the swivel and you're attached. And then to attach your hook length, so here I have a four inch hook length with a bait band and all you do, there's a small o-ring at the other end of the tube and I literally slide my hook length through the loop and then double back on your hook length so it goes through the loop of your ready rig, pull it back tight, make sure the knot's folded over on itself, and there you have. The rig is, is set up now and ready to fish. Now I'll talk you through how to set up an inline feeder. So first of all, pull your rubber cap off the tube and slide your rubber cap up your main line. So as you can see, the rubber cap now is free running on my main line. Next, the feeder tube. These come provided with the method feeders. Slide that onto your main line. So you've got the narrow end at the top and the wider end at the bottom. Slide that on and now you've got both items sliding up and down your main line. Finally, to stop them sliding off, get the end of your main line, and we have here hook length bead. Again, provided with our, with our method feeders. Pull the bead apart, there's two parts. Be careful not to drop the plastic, small plastic part. And slide the rubber part onto your main line. So that is there again, free running on your main line. Then with a the little plastic part, there's a very small hole at the top of this plastic part and you need very good eyesight to be able to thread it up. There we go, that's through. Now, you can tie various different knots. I generally just do a a twisted loop, a really small twisted loop. So you just twist your line and then just do a figure of eight. And it just, for me, that's just my preferred method of securing the, uh, the hook length bead. Trim off the tag end. pull the rubber cap down and then it's located in position. Now that'll stop your feeder falling off your main line. And if I just grab the tube, you can see now I've got the tube, the cap and the bead all fixed to my main line. And all you need to do with the matrix feeders is remove your cap, get your method feeder, 
you've got a groove running along the back the bottom of that make sure that your line got, runs through the groove and push the tube into the feeder pull your cap down and it's fixed in position and then all you need to do with your hook length is pull the bead apart you've got a small cutout on the what we'll call the hook of the feeder bead get your hook length loop it onto the hook if you pull the cap down that can't come free and pull it in and there you are you're ready to fish now one of the key factors to get right when you're fishing the method feeder is bait preparation if your bait isn't right it won't stay around your feeder and you won't be fishing the method feeder as you intend so firstly how to do your pellets how to prepare them so that they don't fall off the feeder so here i've got some standard two mil coarse fishing pellets and what i'll add just some water from the lake and just cover them so if i just tilt this down you'll see now that they're all covered so one of the key things is how long you leave your pellets in the water for micro pellets i like to leave them in anywhere from a minute to a minute and a half don't over soak them once they're too wet they won't form around your feeder the second thing that i have for when i'm method feeder fishing i always have a little bit of ground bait and i'll explain exactly what to do with this in a minute so a little tip to get the water off your pellets really quickly i have a fine mesh landing net I pour my pellets into the fine mesh landing net let the water drip through the bottom and I literally just grab that, squeeze the water out and pop them back in your tub. So that's taken literally two and a half minutes from start to finish. And I know now within the next 10 to 15 minutes, those pellets will be perfect for fishing around the method feeder. So I've touched upon, I have ground bait on my side tray as well. The reason for this is it's much easier to get a consistency of bait that moulds around my method feeder if I combine a proportion of pellets and a proportion of ground bait together. The ground bait just basically helps bind the pellets around the method feeder and it makes me feel a lot more confident when I'm fishing that the, the feeder is going to sink to the bottom and sit on the bottom with the bait intact. So I'll quickly show you what I do when I'm mixing them together. So you've just seen I've prepared my pellets so I'll take a handful of pellets and I'll pop them in a separate tub and then I'll take the same amount of ground bait and again I'll pop it in that tub and then you only need to mix your ground bait very very dry because you've still got all the moisture on your pellets mix the two together and you can see you've now got pellets that have got a dusting of ground bait it's completely up to you how much ground bait you, you like to add. It might vary throughout the day. I generally start with 50-50, and as you can see, it still predominantly looks like pellets, but when I bind that together, it sticks and it all stays together. And that's exactly what you want to happen on your method feeder. You do not want to be casting your method feeder out, and if it hits the water, the bait breaks free from the feeder, because then the feeder's gonna sit on the bottom and do the absolute opposite that you want it to do, which is, you're setting a trap, a little pile of bait with your hook bait in the middle. So when that fish comes along, it opens its mouth, the lot's in, in one go. And if, you bait, if this bait isn't round it, you're just gonna have a hook bait sat by itself. It's not gonna look attractive to a fish. So the only other thing to take into consideration when you're fishing the method feeder is your hook bait. Personal preference, when I'm fishing a commercial venue, I like to stick with pellets, whether they are a bright colored one, like these white ones, or a standard brown, um, coarse fishing pellet might also fish some small boilies or wafters you can fish corn meat maggots bread the options are endless personally for me i like fishing a bait that i know is going to stay on the hook 
So that's why I always opt for, where possible, a, a boily or a uh, hard pellet. So now I'm going to talk you through how to load your feeder and how to effectively cast out and fish the feeder correctly. So firstly, I've got my hook bait, I've gone for a white pellet, it's loaded onto the band. Now, what you'll notice with the matrix feeders, they have an open area here. They do come with a bait platform. I remove it for when I'm fishing boilies or pellets, just because it gives me a much bigger area to be able to fit my bait. As I mentioned earlier, you can use a method feeder without a mould, but it makes life so much easier if you have one. So, first things first, put a tiny sprinkling of bait into the bottom of the mould. Then, lay your hook length on top. So it's like that, in the centre. So it's going to sit where the hollowed part is in the method feeder. Then, fill your mould up to the top and just tap it down. So now I know that my mould's filled to the top. My pellet's not going to show on the very top, but it's going to be under a very, very thin layer of bait. Put your feeder in, give it a really good push down, firm press, open it out, and there you have it, perfect. Now the only other little tip I'd give is even though I've gave that a really firm push in the mould, I still just get my hand around it and give it a, give it a bit of a, a clench in my hand, just to make sure that all the bait's secure. As I said before, when we're making the bait, the most important thing is that that feeder lands on the bottom, bosh, like that. We've got the perfect trap there for any carp or skimmer coming by. You can come along one mouthful and he's ours. So I always use a line clip when I'm fishing the method feeder. This allows me to know what distance I'm casting, but also when I hit the clip, it, I know that the feeder is gonna drop down and not make a massive splash in the water. Always make sure you, you're clipping your line clip up to a, an area that you can cast too comfortably. Don't try and push yourself too much to the point where you're not hitting your line clip every cast. So that's hit the clip. Now you'll notice that my rod is on the same angle when I've hit my clip as my rod rest. Now the reason for this is really, really important. The last thing you want to do when your feed is on the bottom is move it. As soon as that feed has hit the bottom, you need to keep it as still as possible. So I'll pop my rod onto the rest and I don't tighten up. I'll leave it and if, if the line comes slack, I'll gradually tighten the reel handle just slightly so I get a really small bend in the rod tip. But do not be tempted to over tighten it and move that feeder. As soon as you've moved the feeder, it'll have pulled away from the bait and you've lost that trap that we're trying to set. So there's two key points that are worth bearing in mind when you're method feeder fishing. One is where to cast and two is how long to leave your feeder in the water. I'm gonna break these down into really simple terms. Where to cast. If there's an island or any sort of feature or you see fish topping or active within an area, cast to that area. It's as simple as that. Islands hold fish. If you see fish moving, you know there's fish in the area. How long to leave your feeder in the water? A little bit more tricky. General principle is if it's winter time or it's colder, I'd leave my feeder in for anywhere up to 10 minutes. If it's warmer, the summer months, I'd be looking to leave my feeder in there up to five minutes. Again, this depends on fish quantities and size of fish. The bigger the fish, generally, the longer you leave your feeder in, the smaller the fish, you'd anticipate getting a bite much quicker. But again, it's just trial and error, work it out on the day. So there we go, right on cue. I'd say the feeder's been in the water around five minutes. We've got one on. Not a massive fish, but welcome all the same. <laughs>